Good morning, everyone. It's bright this morning. Very bright. Welcome back to the Finca. Beautiful day. Got the beautiful sky. Yeah. Um, what are we on? Well, this video, I'm going to be carrying on, turning this crumbling mass of balanced stones into back into a wall. Um, it's uh, we've been working on it for quite a bit now. It's getting there. Um, we're trying to turn this. What's the old hen house? The old stone hen house um, from days of old into a, a bar to support our support area for our upper courtyard outdoor living area. Yes. What else are we doing? Well, we're four years on now and um, we've been trying desperately to grow <laughs> our own produce. We've had some successes and lots we've, of failures. We've tried everything. <laughs> um, but I, I just thought we'd give you a little update. I know we've done it quite regularly recently, mm. but honestly, if anyone can do it, we can. Yeah, we're um, getting really, really good at some things and we'd like to try, and if we can try and share that, it might help you, like as Shara said, if we can do it. Absolutely. We've never done anything like this before, ever. Yes, um, but so, it looks like this year is going to be our year, so yes. that's really exciting. What to grow, when to grow it, and how to grow it, and what not to grow, perhaps. Yes. Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Over the course of the last four years, my goodness, what have we tried? We've tried broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels. Had absolutely no success. Um, they just died off, whether it was too dry, too, too hot. Um, and then we tried over the winter on the second year and they didn't do very well at all. So maybe again, we have extremes of temperature here. Very hot during the day. Can be really cold at night and obviously that variation. Some plants can cope and others not so. Um, so we've given up on those. Um, we then we've tried peas, we've tried cucumbers, we've tried courgettes, we've tried um, aubergine. Um, cucumbers and peas we didn't do too badly. Um, the plants themselves grew really well and we were so excited but I think the peas we probably had enough for one boiling and the cucumbers we did have lots, but they didn't grow very big. I'm talking that sort of size. They were more like big gherkins. Um, so for now, we might try them again in the future, but for now, we're just concentrating on what's been successful, which I'll share with you in a minute. Um, what else have we tried, Andy? Can't remember. Potatoes. Potatoes. We do well with potatoes. So uh, they're popping up everywhere at the moment, which is excellent. Onions. Oh, yeah, onions. We did have some success with the onions. We didn't have the taste, or did but we? But they didn't weren't... have any strength to them. Spanish we, onions are so sharp. Yeah, them, so. and these were more kind of, um, well, dulce really, sweet onions, but big, but just no flavour, no good for cooking, certainly no good for cooking, all right on the salads. And they take a lot of water, a lot of care, and we've kind of decided it's really not worth our while. Onions are not that expensive in comparison to a lot of other stuff we buy at the supermarket. So for now, we've given up on the onions as well. Um, have I missed anything? Our vines, we're four years on now with our vines. These were grown from seed, believe it or not, and it is incredibly difficult apparently to grow vines from seed. Most people buy the plugs. Um, this one is going great guns. We haven't got any sign of fruit yet, but um, I think it does take a while for them to get their roots down, get established, and um, to grow grapes, but we remain hopeful. The good thing is they look healthy, and um, we've got another one over there which is out of shot and another one around the front of the house. They're all doing really well, so that's fab. These are artichokes. We must have planted these about three years ago. We've not really had much success. You can see the quality of the soil here. It's not soil, it's mostly stone. Um, we kind of gave up on them last year. We stopped watering them. You know, we have to buy our water in, as you guys know, if you watch us regularly. It's not cheap, and the amount of watering and time and effort, we kind of gave up on them. And then, this year, about ooh, two months ago, they started to pop up from nowhere. So we've now <laughs> gone back to watering them, and um, 
you never know we might get the odd artichoke this year um i again we've never done this before guys so we're learning as we go i don't know how many years it is before they start to produce anything i think that big one over there did produce um a flower once just one great big one um but then very quickly the artichoke itself was just all shriveled up and we never got to eat it so that was a bit of a shame but yes yeah, so really pleased about that because they've just popped up this year from nowhere so never ending work on the wall continues and um, what we've got up there basically is, is the normal wall which is about that thick 16 inches thick um th just over 30 centimeters and then behind it there's another wall so what i'm doing i'm putting a flat top on the existing wall and then building up the wall behind which is the chicken shed the hen shed wall the old hen shed wall um make it look neat and tidy finished off we put a new roof on it a while ago so i want to get it all blocked in now um i've done that bit that you can see it's nice and flat and straight and started building up that wall but i've run out of stones and um, so i need to go and collect some one of our biggest successes has definitely been this asparagus and um, we planted it it's three years now um we went against the rules completely you're supposed to plant the seeds let them grow that first year then dig up the crowns which basically the roots and um, store them for a couple of months until the weather gets warmer put them back in the ground um, and we thought you know what we can't be bothered we've got a lot of work to do on this place as you know and the time it would take us to do that so we didn't bother we went against all the rules we just left them in the ground cut them right back and they've just been absolutely brilliant i think we planted about 75 seeds thinking well they're not all going to take i think probably the majority of them did um, but this year year three we've had our first harvest we've had quite a few lovely meals with fresh asparagus out of the garden it tastes absolutely delicious so much better than you buy in the supermarket it's all organic of course um, but we've, we're going to leave them now we've had our fill of asparagus and apparently you only harvest them for a month is it Andy a month Six and the weeks. first harvest yeah yeah so uh, two months on the subsequent harvest we're gonna just let them go now so that they can just put the nutrients back into that those crowns um, and we should have an even better crop next year hopefully you can see better from there I've got a nice flat ledge and, um, and then the wall coming up behind it it's not the best place to work it's really awkward there's nowhere to put anything but we battle on then we come to the fruit trees. When we first got the place, first thing we did before we got permissions and we couldn't obviously work on the house was to plant trees. We wanted to have a nice orchard, all different fruits, apple, pear, orange, uh, cherry, apricot, um, peach, um, the plum, the um, pomegranate, couldn't think of the word. We had a fig tree, we had a nisperro. Um, all that we're left with are these three here. This one has actually been replaced. This is the niece Perro because the first one was in a different place and didn't survive. Um, again, you can see the quality of the soil here. Um, it's very, very difficult to water even because it just does not retain the water. It just runs off the stones. But these three have done so well because they're in the vicinity of the soak away for the septic tank. We actually don't water. This one, because it's been recently replaced we are still watering but these we haven't watered now for probably two years apart from when it rains obviously and they are thriving we've got loads of plums lots of flowers on the pomegranate tree so we're hopeful for some of those this year um but the others yeah all gone just because no matter how many watering cans of water we were giving them it just wasn't soaking into the ground and they just did not survive too dry too hot not enough water yeah of course other trees don't seem to need any water at all you can see behind me all the almond trees we've got the olive trees along here loads of blossom on this one this year and um, without any water whatsoever so i think that what we're trying to say is you just need to find out what will grow in your area in your region um, and how much water they need and how much water you get um, because as I say, we've, we have spent a lot of money on our trees and um, success three, three out of 13 trees. Um, so yeah, you just need to learn your, your terrain, if that's the word, and uh, 
plant what suits it. So we're quite fortunate, we're surrounded by stones. I want this kind of size at the moment to fill in under the roof and a sawmill. I also need some flatter ones um, to face up that wall, which we don't have around here, so I'm going to have to go and have a, a hunt for those. Um, but yeah, this sort of size are going to go in well. Uh, so I'll fill my bucket to the limit that I can carry it up the ladder and uh, carry on. And then we come to the melons. Um, somebody said to us, oh melons, they grow like weeds. You can't fail with melons. Well, we've tried three three years on the trot. Um, first of all, in a tub, just threw a load of seeds in from a melon that we had eaten ourselves. And I couldn't believe one morning I woke up and we must have had 40 melons in this tub. Thinned them out a bit, of course, um, but brought them up here to uh, put in the courtyard, sheltered from the wind, etc. The problem was we were only coming up here at the weekend at that point because we weren't living here. Um, and I think it was just too hot and too dry and they didn't survive sadly. Um, then a couple of years later when we actually moved in um, we put them in the ground. We thought well we'll put some nice compost um, and mixed with the existing soil which you've seen the quality of and planted again about 24 seeds and in fact they all came up and they were doing really well and we did have melons but I think the biggest one was just about like that. Um, very nice, very sweet, very juicy but again as it got hotter and hotter July and August the plants started to shrivel up and of course the melons they were so dry and, and hard you couldn't eat them um, so that was a real shame and we thought well maybe melons is just not the right terrain for melons we'll, we'll give up and then this year Andy was desperate he said you know what I really want some melons because he likes his Serrano ham with melons um, and they are so expensive in the shops I don't know about where you guys live but um, we looked the other day and for half a melon it was four euros that's just extortionate so a packet of seeds 150 nothing to lose we threw a load in here and in the last couple of days they've started to pop up so obviously once we know how many we've got we need to re pot them we're going to get some more tubs and some more compost um, but really pleased and of course being in a pot as opposed to in the ground you can keep it moist you can control the amount of water that they get so happy days so the first mix of the day I'm using the traditional sand and lime water three parts sand one part hydrated lime Give it a good mix to get it dry. Then we add water till we get the consistency that we want. I only mix small amounts because um, it takes so long fiddling about with the stones. Um, don't really want to mix too much at once. Don't need to. to mix it for a good 10 minutes probably our biggest success um, has been peppers and tomatoes so these are our pepper plants this is year two now we've managed to overwinter them they're on the front of the house it's south facing obviously sheltered from the wind that comes off the mountains and um, hope you can hear me there's a lorry just gone past um, but yes yeah, so very pleased with these they're a lot stronger this year so they should be able to hold more fruit We've got a couple of flowers coming already and um, so start us off early this year and these are the latest ones as I say every year we try and overwinter what we've got the existing plants and then for the spring plant some new ones so in theory we should have um, peppers all year round um, so these are just popping up now these are the Italian the Dulce um, peppers and either side we've got bell peppers um, again we need to repot them get some more pots and some compost and um, separate them when they get a little bit bigger that one's getting its second leaves already so we'll probably leave that one where it is and just pick out the smaller ones um, but not quite yet so first up go the stones Yeah. 
next don our gloves get the mix up there we need to wet the whole thing down my sprayer is already up there it's living up there at the minute and um, start rebuilding the wall Ugh. The caper plant of course, we have no control over this at all, it just grows literally out of the wall with all those stones, there's hardly any soil. You you ask me how it works, I've no idea, but it does and it works really well. So that's coming on a treat, um, I think we've said before, once the flowers come out the bees absolutely love it, so that's got to be good and we love the capers that we get off there um, afterwards, so yeah, fantastic. Now we got a little bit more done. Um, the wall going up at the back is looking great and um, the roof at the right hand side he's got some stones under it now but we're gonna have to break it off there um, very briefly we're eating it to the bodega we've run out of wine so we're off to the local bodega um, winery to anyone that doesn't know um, um, this one that we go to is um, a private one so sometimes you get the cooperatives but basically all the farmers from the local areas um, take their wine and drop it off at the cooperative their grapes rather and drop them off at the cooperative and they turn it into wine um, but ours is a little family run bodega and uh, produce their own grapes and make their own wine um, the grape in our area is predominantly monastrell which we really really enjoy um, so yes, thought we'd take you with us. So here we are, a little local bodega, lovely mural on the wall. They've been making wine since 1888, so I guess they know what they're doing. Let's go and get some. Inside the bodega is quite a historical place. There's an old motorcycle in the entrance, um, along with various other old things an old oil barrel, an old bicycle, etc. Um, there are displays of old barrels and things. These are the barrels that the wine is kept in. We've got Rosé, Red and Añeco, which is an older wine. Um, the wine is built in, uh, brewed, brewed, fermented, whatever it is, in the big vats there, and then pumped into the smaller barrels from there. Um, you can buy it in 5 litres or 3 litre if you like, you can even taste it, there's glasses up there so you can give it a try before you buy you can even buy it in bottles and they have an assortment of other liqueurs and stuff available should you so fancy but anyway, time to get back to work And this is the old bath um, that we transplanted the raspberry bush that was on the front of the house that seemed to be suffering with the heat last year. Um, whether we were too late at doing it, I don't know, but that seems to have just died. Um, 
Shame, but you know, we've tried strawberries as well and they don't work very well over here. Why that should be, I don't know, but again, probably controlling the amount of water. Um, potatoes, my goodness, these have just appeared. Um, I don't remember last year we bought a sack of potatoes off a local farmer and we were really disappointed the quality of them. They were sprouting already, a lot of them were green. Um, so we thought complete waste of money, but hey ho, we'll just let them do their thing. And then at the end of the, the season, we just threw the whole sack in here. Um, and nothing happened until now. And all of a sudden, all these potatoes are popping up. So I think we'll be all right for potatoes this year. So that's good progress. I could really ideally do with putting our little tower up here. We've got a little access platform of scaffold tower. Um, but there's no way I can put it there because of the deposit ledge underneath. There's not, it's not level to put it on. My knees are sore, I'm wedging myself on a ladder just above there with these pressing on them. My calves are sore, we're walking up and down. So I reckon it's time for an ice cold beer. So there you go, without Andy obscuring the view. Um, he's doing a great job. He's absolutely broken, bless him. So uh, as he said, but definitely time for an ice cold beer and pick it up again tomorrow. We've tried two orange trees, one up on the land, which I've already said had died, and then we had a mandarin that we put on the front of the house in lots of compost and was supposed to be able to survive temperatures of up to minus 10, so we were thinking it should do really well. Well, it died. Um, when we actually dug it up, the root was so dry, it was unbelievable compared to all the water we'd been feeding it. So again, it just goes to show um, anything in pots seems to do really well for us, but this ground is a nightmare. However, this is an established um, orange tree that was here when we came. It was very overgrown. We did chop it right back and this is about year three now. We've had loads of blossom this year and loads of bees and we're hoping, well I can see, we have got oranges on there, so providing nothing comes along and eats it, which has happened in the past, we should have our first harvest this year. Uh, so I'm going to move the ladder along in anticipation. Um, it's like a, a foot at a time. Uh, <laughs> I've done this I'm gonna to have to go back to the start again to point it all up and finish it all off but we're getting there so we're getting closer to the end last few stones coming up um, I've got this corner to do and these here are just balanced at the minute so I want to get them stuck in as well so I'll go and do another yet another mix Our tomato plants, we planted them here last year, they were amazing, so we've gone for the same place for them this year. Um, we've got flowers appearing already, don't know whether you can see those on camera, um, but they're doing really well so that's good. And again, watering um, doesn't get sun all day round, which I think is the key. The afternoon it will be flooded with sunlight, but in the morning it's time for you to water them so that they don't burn and then it's dried off by the time the sun comes out and they just seem to love it here.
So in this tub we've got spinach and that's just starting to get nice big leaves now. Um, and in here mint and basil which um, the mint we never planted we just had a, a twig of mint that somebody gave us and we just popped it in there and every year we have to pull it out because it just goes wild and um, the basil we did plant seeds um, but then last year rather than pulling up the dead plants just left them let them rot down and now we've got lovely basil growing so that's obviously self-seeded and my theory is if something seeds itself then it must be stronger um, than you know things that you sow so uh, I think we're going to have a good crop there um, and I'll show you the rocket. This is our rocket we've tried all sorts of salady things and um, various types of lettuce um, not with much success what tends to happen is it all comes at once and then it shoots because we can't eat it quick enough and um, we end up throwing it away. Um, rocket however, we just keep cutting it and it keeps growing so that I've had loads and loads of this for my lunch already this year and as you can see we've got a tub full again. We love our bacon, rocket and tomato, BRT rather than BLT sandwiches so uh, that's probably what we'll be having later. Right well it's super happy days. The wall, what a mission that's been. It's fundamentally built. <laughs> um, it's obviously not finished, it needs some pointing up. There's some couple of gaps by the top of the ladder there and stuff that need filling in. But essentially, um, the hardest work is done anyway. So yeah, that's a, that is a happy days. So tonight I'm doing a curry. We like our spinach, we like our sag. So I'm gonna take some of this because it's getting quite leggy now. I think if you pick it, or cut it rather, it'll continue to grow. So We've also got lots of mint here, you may notice, and we don't really know what to do with it. So I thought, you know what, we'll just throw it in the curry as well. I'm sure it can't be bad, so we'll <laughs> let you know what it's like. So there's a fair bit there, as I say we're going to mix it with some mint, going to leave that and you can see around the edges the tiny ones are coming up now so they've got a bit more room to grow now and hopefully that that we've cut will come back, little tiny ones there look so we should enjoy that. So that's all I've got to show you today I think. Um, in summary really it, it is just about getting to know your area, the soil, um, what grows well on certain temperatures and what doesn't. Um, as I say it's been trial and error for us, um, we've never done anything like this before. I know that Finca Life is about the restoration of the Finca but in the very very beginning we said we did want to try and be as self-sufficient as possible so that's where the growing comes in. So every so often we like to update you and I hope you have found it interesting. Um, so that's it for this time guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, thank you to everyone that's subscribed and if you have got this far and you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so, click on the button below. Um, thank you to all our Patreons, everybody that's bought us a coffee or a nice cold beer on a day like today, it's very much appreciated and we'll see you next time.